Hello and welcome to Manga Tora 96 and today we have the review of One Piece chapter 1024 titled Nobody Important. This chapter made Yamato joining the Straw Hats less likely with what we learned in this chapter. While a big question mark appeared on her joining the crew after Wano, despite all of this she is still in pole position to join the crew if anybody will. Apart from the Yamato stuff, this chapter heavily focused on fathers, with Kaido once again proving that he isn't a good father, by any stretch of the imagination, but at the same time he wouldn't win the award for worst father of the year, as the competition for this award is huge in the manga and anime media, with Kaido despite being a horrible father, he wouldn't be nowhere near close enough to win this award. This chapter also gave us the best look on Shimotsuki Ushimaro so far with him being pretty much confirmed in being Zoro's father. Now let's save all that for later and start at the beginning of this week's chapter. In the celebration of the 100th volume of One Piece being released, the series got the cover of the magazine this week. The cover itself is nothing more than an ad for some new gacha figures that you can get in Japan. We also got the second part of the big poster for the One Piece World popularity poll. This part is dominated by all the Straw Hats and the members of the worst generation, with cameos of Bon Clay, Crocodile, Roger, Enel and Major Whoopslap, who really is out of place in a lineup like this. Going into the chapter, the first thing that we see is that another member of the Straw Hats is using Supreme King's Hockey. After Luffy and Zoro, the crew got a new Supreme King wielder in God Usopp. Jokes aside, Usopp is using the fact that Big Mom's Supreme King's hockey that she is using in her fight against Law and Kid is affecting the Beast Pirate's father on the same floor to make it seem as he is doing it, in order to intimidate those who aren't knocked out. First of all, it's surprising that Law and Kid are pushing Big Mom into using so much of her Supreme King Saki in their fight. It would be nice to see what exactly is going on, as so far the only thing that we saw of that fight was them staring at each other. Second, while Usopp is lying in this case about his supposed use of Supreme King Saki, we all know of his track record of the lies he told becoming true. So now him awakening to this power isn't something surprising but something to be expected. I'm not sure why Oda would go that road of Usopp having Supreme King Saki, as I don't think he needs it, and with the third member of the Straw Hats possessing Supreme King Saki set in stone, it does feel a little bit crowded on this small crew with so many kings in it, which makes it harder for others with the same disposition to join as well. Apart from that, the opening pages serve for the Straw Hats who defeated the Toby Ropo to contact each other and get any status updates on what is happening right now. That way, Nami contacts Frankie who with Beppo and company tries to fend off the Beast Pirate father in reaching the life floor so they can't interfere in the fight between Zoro and Sanji versus King and Queen. Then we move to the third floor where Brook is escaping the burning mansion with the unconscious Robin in his arms, once again showing that Black Maria was the only one who managed to push her opponent to her limits as Robin is right now the only straw hat member out of action. Also, we could possibly get a second countdown in this arc after the one of Onigashima reaching the capital. As the mansion on the third floor is uncontrollably on fire, this fire could spread throughout Onigashima before long, that way giving us another thing to worry about. Brook mentions the same to Jinbei who received the help from the kid pirates on the fourth floor, where we see two new members of the kids crew that we haven't seen so far alongside Heat. We have some big dude with spiky hair and Kid also has at least one woman on his crew as we see some small woman who apparently fights by biting people as indicated by that panel. Before we go to the main part of this chapter, we briefly see the entrance of the life floor where Kawamatsu and the Yakuza bosses are protecting the entrance from the beast pirates in order for Zoro and Sanji to fight without worry. After that, we go back to the roof where we witness the main event in the fight between Kaido and Yamato. 
Once again, it's shown that Yamato is in fact a mini version of Kaido, as her fighting style is the same as her father's, with the only difference being that the names for Kaido's attacks sound stronger and are stronger in power. As it's shown where Yamato uses an attack that Kaido easily deflects with his Kanabo, after which he uses the same attack with a slightly cooler name and more power, which sends Yamato flying into a boulder. Yamato says that Kaido is trying to kill her in this fight on which he confirms this, but I have a hard time believing in those words as first of all Kaido is known for not killing his opponents and he will only kill them if he doesn't have any other choice like with Odin. Second, while it's debatable if he feels anything as a father towards Yamato, it's clear that Yamato is an integral part of his new Onigashima plan so it would hurt his plans if he was going to kill Yamato, as not only would he lose his tool for ruling Wano, but he would also lose the devil fruit power that he worked hard to obtain in the first place. So despite what Kaido says, I really can't see him being serious in this fight, as it would be a huge setback in his plans if Yamato was going to die, and maybe he also has the tiniest feelings as a father deep inside of him or not. Either way, the fact of the matter is that he really can kill Yamato. After that exchange, we get a brief flashback that started a week or so after Odin's execution, as after that event Yamato went on a week-long rampage on Onigashima where she defeated every beast part that tried to stop her and in the process she probably awakened her supreme king Saki similarly to Ace where she didn't even realize it which first of all is a big minus in her aspirations of joining the Straw Hats. I'll talk about that in more detail at the end of the video. After witnessing this scene, Kaido is first of all pleased that Yamato possesses Supreme King Saki, but he is also displeased with her going on and on on being Odin. He also tells her that if she doesn't stop with this Odin nonsense, she will be better off dead which shows again what I've been talking about before as Kaido had 20 years in which Yamato defied him time and time again. If he really wanted to get rid of her, he would have done it already, but he didn't. Which just shows that him killing her are just empty threats. On a side note, Chibi Yamato is just adorable. Anyway, Kaido throws Yamato in a cave where there are already three samurai. Yamato is chained to a rock with Kaido leaving behind some swords and one portion of hood in the hopes that the samurai would fight among themselves for it with it being an impetus for breaking their spirits and ultimately joining his crew, but that went well as you would expect. Yamato on the other hand is terrified as she believes that the samurai will kill her just for being Kaido's child, but luckily for her those samurai don't believe in the sins of a father or the sins of the child, so they gave her the food instead to eat as she is hungry, with them claiming that samurai don't get hungry, which is a throwback at what Momo was saying back in Punk Hazard. While the samurai don't name themselves as they believe that a defeated samurai has no need to introduce themselves, but it's reasonable to assume that those three samurai are the daimyos of Ringo, Kibi and Udon, with the daimyo of Ringo being Shimotsuki Ushimaru, who of what we see of him in this chapter does look like an older version of Zoro, so him being Zoro's father is highly likely. Yamato and the three samurai bond with each other over the course of 10 days, where they help Yamato in reading Odin's logbook, with Yamato being in the possession of Odin's logbook even then, those seem to indicate that she found the logbook right after Odin Castle burned down. Either way, after 10 days, Yamato is on the verge of starvation that the three samurai decide to break out in order for her to escape. Incidentally, this could be right before she ate her devil fruit, as she did tell us that she only ate the fruit because she was starving. The samurai's escape is not shown what has happened to them after, but it's safe to assume that they were killed in their last rampage. We move back to the present, to the last scene of the chapter where Yamato, after recalling those memories with the nameless free samurai, is still really fond of them. 
with her questioning what right did Kaido have in taking her freedom as well as the freedom of Wano as a whole. On which Kaido has an interesting response in claiming that there are no easy answers in this world coupled with him calling Yamato an immature brat. What does that mean that there are no easy answers in this world? I guess it has something to do with the void century and with something that Kaido knows about Wano which makes it so important in the first place. If that isn't the case, it's a really weak response in trying to justify in taking over a country, enslaving the populace and even treating your own kid as a hostage. To see just what is going on in Kaido's head, we will have to wait to see his flashback which will probably happen sometimes in his fight with Luffy. For the last panel we have a beautiful clash of Yamato and Kaido who both use the Thunder Bagua at the same time with black lightning emanating from their clash, which would indicate that both are using Supreme King Saki in this clash. And with this awesome clash, which apparently does seem to be a draw, we end this chapter. Now in this chapter we got two things which make Yamato's chances of joining the crew less likely. The first being her possessing the Supreme King Saki, which would mean that we would have three confirmed users on a crew of at least 11 people and with Usopp's lie in this chapter it's really likely that he will also awaken this power in the future, which will then mean four users on at least 11 members which just sound a bit too much for a little crew number wise like the Straw Hats. The second problem that Yamato has is her strength. It's hard to tell how strong she really is as I do think that Kaido is holding back in this fight, but nevertheless she is fighting Kaido one on one which is an impressive feat in of itself despite him definitely holding back. Now the problem here is if she joined where would she be in the strength hierarchy of the crew as Oda made it crystal clear that Zoro and Sanji are above Jinbei in terms of strength which was something that was heavily debated with Jinbei joining. It's hard to tell but I would put her on the same level as both Zoro and Sanji if not a bit stronger. If that really is the case then this would hamper her chances of joining the crew more than her possessing Supreme King Saki. All in all, while this chapter is definitely weaker than the last two chapters, but it's still a good chapter of One Piece with us learning something more about Yamato. And that will be all for this video. If you like this video leave a like, leave your thoughts in the comments below or subscribe to the channel for more One Piece content as well as other manga content and we'll see you next time. Take care.